Hey cats, welcome to Ed Bud Running Shoe Reviews. My name's Ed Steakfly Bud. The members will understand what I'm on about. Today I've got an initial review for you of the Nike Zumex Streetfly. It's the shoe that everyone wants. This one sold out pretty quickly on release the other day. Managed to get a pair. I'm gonna give you my breakdown after 12 miles. Here we go. Welcome to the channel cats, thanks for coming back, it's always appreciated. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you hit that sub button and also click the bell below for notifications of when I roll them out for you. You can also help the channel out by giving this video a thumbs up like and sharing it with your running buddies. Mucho gracias. Today we're looking at the Nike ZMAX Streetfly. It released the other day over here in Europe. I'm sure it's gonna drop in America soon and the rest of the regions. I picked this one up in a UK size 11, which is a US size 12. These come in at 196 grams, which is 6.9 ounces. That makes the Streetfly about an ounce lighter than the Takumi Sen 8 in my size. So I was spot on in my prediction. I thought they might just get in under 200 grams and they, they are very light, I have to say. Using my arbitrary measuring system, which is like several rulers and some other stuff, I think there's about 38 millimeters of stack height here in the heel. It's supposed to be a six mil drop, so it should be about 32 millimeters in the forefoot. When you look at this shoe compared to the Turbo 2, which came out a few years back, it actually looks like the Turbo 2's got more midsole stack in the heel. Actually, it cups around the heel a little bit, everything that you've got here all the zoom x is right underneath the foot odd to think that this is now classified as a minimal shoe yeah certainly isn't really i do have a couple of shoes that have come in from europe actually that someone wants me to test out on there much more minimal than this i think the rebel 2 and perhaps the takumi sen 8 are the most comparable shoes i will have a more in-depth comparison against those two certainly a similar heel and forefoot midsole stack as the takumi sen 8 and i think there's actually more forefoot zoom x here than you got in the vaporfly four percent apparently i've been trying to figure out if that's right i'm not entirely sure it certainly looks like there's more in the Vaporfly 4%. I've not been sent this shoe or anything by Nike. I purchased it with my own Earth credits. So you know you always get my honest opinions as usual. If the shoe's a load of old I'll tell you. We'll start with the upper first. There isn't much the upper at all. The mesh here is extremely transparent, super flexible as well. It kind of feels like putting a shirt on your foot. I think this one's going to get about as mucky as that Next% Percent 2 prototype I picked up last year. I had to clean that about four or five times. It just got really, really dirty. I'm enjoying the larger, more padded tongue that we get here in the Street Fly, as opposed to the one that we saw in the Rival Fly 3. That was just a little bit too short. Only by millimetres we're talking here, but they got it spot on here in the Street Fly. No danger of those very thin laces that we have here in the Street Fly cutting into the top of your foot like some sort of egg slicer. The tongue is partially gusseted. It joins up around about here, but there's absolutely no danger of that tongue shifting around whatsoever. The lacing system here in terms of the eyelets reminds me a little bit of the original version of the Rebel from New Balance. You've got these little loops on the lateral medial side and they do a great job at pulling the upper round on top of the foot. Though the upper here really is just to hold the midsole onto your foot. That is literally its only job. I'm loving the padding that we've got here in the heel of the shoe. It's exactly like that we saw in the alpha fly and the next percent i think the aim of the upper here is to literally just keep out of the way it's a bit like a good referee you know you just don't ever see them they let the game flow toe box profile is quite low it has to be said though i am liking a slightly wider toe box here but I mean, who's going to have really low profile toes and very wide feet? If you've got a narrow foot, you are going to get some bunching around about this area of the shoe. Just be aware of that. If it really bothers you a lot, as long as the shoe feels good, I don't really care what it looks like. I could have trimmed off a little bit of material there. Fortunately, it's not as bad as the upper was on the Zoom Fly 4. That really sucked. In terms of sizing length, I have to say this one fits true to size. I'm wondering whether it's going to do that offset lacing here on the top of the shoe that makes that bunching. The only other shoe I've really seen that crop up and it being a problem is the Next% Percent original and the Next% Percent 2 come to that. Yeah, and they both have the same lacing system, so maybe. No rubbing, no issues whatsoever. 12 miles, 19.3 kilometers. I only went out to do about seven miles. I just kept going. It felt so good. Comfortable and a barely there feel. I'm going to give it a 2.8 out of three. Only let down by the 
really, really thin laces. They're hard to undo, especially when your hands are cold. And that bunching, there's something odd going on here with the upper. A little bit too tight in the toe box and just too much material here. So a couple of points off of that. It's all now. A Zoomex slither. And boy, does it sound like Zoomex. It makes that squashy noise that you all love. <laughs> There's this old man that I ran past and he was like, What are you running on, stylophone? The profile, I suppose, isn't that far off the Rival Fly 3 that I really enjoyed a couple of months back. Though you had Kushl on there, it's Zoomex here. It's a very different story. There's also a crushed Zoomex insole in this shoe. Don't think a lot of people have picked up on that yet. Last time I ran in a shoe that had that was the Tempo Next Percent, and I really liked it. If you feel inside the shoe, you can pretty much feel where that shank begins and ends. It isn't very long. It starts a little bit earlier than I thought it would. Does it provide all that much propulsion? Well, no, not really. I think it's there to provide a bit of stability, a bit of torsional rigidity as well. I did find the right shoe that I received. The insole was far too far back, so I actually removed it. Uh, re-glued it, reapplied it, and it was fine after that. I think removing all the tech, just having a small shank there, it's probably just plastic or something, I don't think it's carbon or anything. It's quite refreshing really, going back to something that's just so simple in design. Now, the ZoomX here feels more like the rubberized stuff that we saw in the Invincible run. I am absolutely certain that there's a couple of different variations of this stuff now. It's really rubbery and plasticky feeling, the same as this old tank. Doesn't really feel as brittle and kind of hollow, I suppose, as the stuff that's in the Vaporfly 4% or the Next Percent. If you think I'm crazy, if you think I'm imagining it, well, fair enough, but that's my opinion. I do think that there is a difference. It's really compressive, this stuff. It really is. Without a plate there, you notice just how much squish there is. It's probably only a couple of moments on my run today where I actually wish that there was something else there. Was it starting to bottom out in the forefoot a little bit? Maybe, but I don't think the shoe's intended to go up towards the half marathon distance. I'm not saying you can't do that. Obviously, you can run any distance in any shoe, can't you? You know, it doesn't mean to say that you have to only use it at 5 or 10k. That's like saying that you should only use a Fender Jazzmaster to play jazz. And we all know that people haven't done that. Due to that compressive nature of the foam, I think that shank is there. It would just be a little bit too flexible, I think, if you didn't have it in place. There'd just be no torsional rigidity whatsoever. The part of the back of the shoe is literally, I'm putting no pressure on that. It's so compressive. So easier paces of about eight minutes per mile, which is about five minutes per kilometer. Felt nice and smooth, serviceable, I suppose. When I engaged a more aerobic effort at around seven minutes 30 per mile, it was about four minutes 40 per kilometer. You do start to feel a little bit of the benefit there. It urges you to run a little bit faster. But of course, you know, it says five and 10K on the tin, so you've got to test it out at that pace. I run a few faster reps there, up to my 5K pace, around six minutes 30 per mile which is about four minutes per kilometer it starts sort of shaking and it turns into this fireball and you get transported into the future it sort of disappears actually to a point this shoe you don't really notice that there's anything there i don't want to say it's like running barefoot but it does feel so light and the zoom x is so forgiving i suppose that it just starts to disappear i think as the miles racked up and i started to think about the weight saving i started to yearn for like a plate or a part plate in the shoe could it then reach that half marathon distance i don't know still felt forgiving enough over the longer miles and I really like that versatility. I did loads of shorter bursts today like three or two minutes and then some short recoveries in between and it felt wonderful. In fact the legs feel really good right now. I don't feel like I've run 12 miles. I feel like I've done a easy three or four. Sort of feels a little bit like half an invincible run. Does that make sense? See what I mean? It's kind of like half of one. I've just sliced it in two. Really enjoyed myself out there today. I'm going to give this a 2.8 out of three for the midsole after my initial run. Outsole now. There's something strangely snake-like about this outsole. I can't quite put my finger on it. The rubber here definitely reminds me of a stretched version of that we saw on the Tempo Next Percent or the Alpha Fly. And that stuff was pretty durable, so I'm glad to see it make a return here. Similar depth to the fins, and on my run today, there was equally as good traction and grip. Be aware, guys, that these are about 106 grams lighter in my size than the Tempo Next Percent. If some people really like that shoe because it's quite weighty. It's almost like a pendulum-like feel. Quite a different feel between the Tempo Next Percent and the Street Fly. You don't have those AirPods or that stabilizing react section in the rear of the shoe. No issues on concrete, road, 
gravel or cracked stone paths. I found it to have superb traction, in fact. Not once did I think about it today. I don't think there's anything other than the exposed midsole section of the shoe to worry about. The rubber here seems reasonably generous. The fins are fairly deep. Could make for a fantastic track shoe as well, I think. Even in the heel area, Nike have been relatively generous, giving us some reasonably deep rubber here. And let's not forget, they've got that wrong on multiple occasions in the past. I'm really glad Nike have gone with the same rubber that we found on the Alpha Fly and the Tempo Next Percent. It's one of those model's best features, I think. I'm actually going to give this a 2.9 out of 3 for the outsole after my initial runs. We've got to talk value now. So value-wise, I always tend to think of the versatility of the shoe. How often can I grab it and utilise it? Is it something I want to wear on a daily basis? Or is it something I want to just pull out for those special sessions? I think it's going to really appeal to people that are running 5K through to half marathons. I think people who want less weight, perhaps, a more forgiving feel and a nice consistent outsole grip. I think it's a darn attractive price as well. 135 Earth credits. When you pair that up against the Takumi Sen 8, which was about 170. Yeah. I don't think when you consider the Zoom Fly 4 is a little bit more expensive than this shoe. It doesn't make sense to me. People have been crying out for a shoe like this for a long time without Zoom X foam. There's something magical about it. I mean, I'm still holding out a little bit for a 4% reissue. I'm sure that they'll do that at some point. But certainly after my initial run, I think this has got the beating over the Takumi San 8. Just feels a lot more nimble, a lot more sprightly. Feels like I could use it for practically any run I wanted. If I was going to go super long, I'd probably pull out something with a bit more cushion. But for me, ideal. No gimmicks, really. It's just straight up simple. One thing I do want to talk about here is the quality control. I did have a lot of loose kind of threads here and there all over the shoe. Never really had that with a Nike. The way the midsole foam's been autoclaved, it's really shabby and shoddy, kind of misshapen in certain places. It does make you wonder whether that's something to do with those issues that are ongoing around the world. We all know that Nike have had major manufacturing and also transportation and distribution problems recently. Looking at the tag that's inside the shoe on the insole, it does mention that these shoes have been manufactured between a huge time period. I think it was like the end of March last year through to the end of December last year. Don't often see that with Nike shoes so makes you wonder whether they've been producing them and it's just taken ages perhaps they've moved to the different factories could explain it but yeah a little bit disappointing in terms of the finish of the shoe it's dynamite fast though guys and it's crazy like a uk 11 at 196 grams it's just bonkers i'm not sure it's got enough cushion for everybody but for a lot of runners out there i think you'll really enjoy it i'm going to give this a 2.8 out of 3 for value after my initial runs it's just really versatile for many sessions if i've totaled the scores up correctly that should give us 11.3 out of 12 after my initial runs for the Nike Zoom X Streak Fly. You gonna pick these up, guys, or did you manage to get one on the initial drop? Let me know in the comments below. Musical interlude time. So, in the last video, I talked to you about a new album from the Eels. How it was produced by John Parrish. I actually went back to that original album they did, Soul Jacker, which was in like 2001, I think. Here's some fantastic tunes. Fresh Feeling is one of my favourite eel songs. It's got these beautiful strings, which I think they actually took from unused bits from another album. I love the sinister guitar riff on Soul Jacker. It's just nasty. Dog Faced Boy is another great track as well. <laughs> conjures up images of the circus and things like that. I really like the track Jungle Telegraph, which makes E sound like he's talking through a CB radio. It's a brilliant album, guys. Go and check it out. All Eel stuff is brilliant. It's just so different. He doesn't have any care for convention or trying to sell loads of records or anything. Eels with Soul Jacker. All that's left for me to say is Dankeschön. Thanks for stopping by. It's always appreciated. Hope you've had a fantastic weekend or day or wherever it is that you're watching this. You might be watching this in the future, like in about a year's time and 
I'm wondering what on earth you've just witnessed, but that's fine. Remember to hit that subscribe button and also click the bell below for notifications if I we roll out those new videos for you. You can help the channel get out there to more people by hitting that like button and also sharing it with your running buddies. Don't forget you can pick up some merch too from the links below and now join the Edbud Running Shoes crew. There's three different tiers with loads of different perks to help you communicate not only with me but also with the rest of the Running Shoe crew. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.